I'm starting with Matthew 5:13. Um, and so uh, again, so when I was thinking about this and it's like, um, why does God choose to, choose to use certain words? Um, salt and light, and then what is it about salt? And why did that make it interesting for him to use? You know, so I'm always just geeked out about like choices of words. And um, I started to think about salt and how, how it, there's different kinds of salt and like the, it's very potent, um, it's small, like all these different things, it's white, whatever. So just trying to think about like salt, right? But from a context perspective, um, so he uses this scripture right um, after the Sermon on the Mount where he's talking about the Beatitudes, like blessed are those that, and he's going through all of that. So essentially, um, it's like the foundations of life, really. And so um, when you look back about salt, you I mean, we all know like salt adds flavor, right? Um, salt can disinfect wounds, even though we don't really use it that way today. I don't think we do, maybe we do. Um, and it can preserve food. Um, there's different types of salt. There's table salt, salt. there's um, kosher salt, there's sea salt, rock salt. And from a historical perspective, Roman soldiers would receive their wages in salt. So way back then, so salt was like a big, big ordeal. It was considered to be divine. Um, the Mosaic law required that all offerings presented by the Israelites contain salt. Um, the word salary comes from the ancient word meaning salt money. So it was a, a big deal in um, that time period. So when we think about salt, the first thing that um, I wanted to talk about, there's like three different, if you're like me from an outline perspective, flavor is one, contamination, and then um, using it to preserve, right? So when we think about flavor, we all know that like when you're cooking, right? And um, sometimes you may use salt or not, but let's just say you're eating somebody else's food because this is what normally happens. You eat somebody else's food and you taste it and you like, I need a little, a little salt on that because it's bland, right? So you'll add some salt to it, right? To enhance the flavor of it. Um, so it can bring out good flavors hidden in food. And so when I started to think about that more and it's like, so when he was talking about being you are salt and light. I think you can use that when you're thinking about how you are around others, right? Because salt brings out flavor. So if we are salt, then you should be technically bringing something out of those that you are around. Yeah. So think about how are you being influential with those that are around you or is it when you're around certain people, then you, you put off a flavor of um, it tastes bad. So, you know, if you use too much salt or whatever, it can kind of like, you know, whatever. It's contaminated, right? Um, is how I'm going to use it for the instance of this. So if you can be around certain individuals, what we should be doing is like being more influential and bringing out the flavor. But then there are times where you might be not bringing that out, right? So um, if you look at Colossians 4, 5 through 6, and I'm going to give you some time because, again, I didn't put it up in time for you to see it on the screens. But in the NASB version, it says, conduct yourselves with wisdom towards outsiders. And it's talking about unbelievers, making the most of the opportunity. Let your speech always be with grace and through and and those seasoned with salt so that you will know how you should respond to others. So if we were to take the first part of that, conduct yourselves with wisdom towards unbelievers. Um, oftentimes it's hard in some circles to identify who's the believer and who's the unbeliever yeah. because of how we show up. Um, oftentimes, and I've, and I've been around this before, there's certain things that an unbeliever would say or, or a believer would say or do, and you would have to scratch your head the next time you guys meet, maybe in a one-on-one -on -one set, setting, and they're like, oh, I go to church and I'm a Christian. And you're like, huh? Like, 
just because of the experiences that you might have had with them before. Um, and so to me, you would identify that person as someone who potentially has lost their saltiness, right? Because there is no difference between how they are and there is no difference between how they are with as a, a believer and you can't see a difference if they were an unbeliever, right? So the second part of it, it says, um, let your speech always be with grace and seasoned with salt. And um, Lord help me because I know personally that's probably an area that I can work on, um, especially when it comes to my spouse. So um, when I read that scripture, that's immediately what I went to about how your delivery is when you're speaking to people. So for an example, when it's spouse related, um, the word right is true regardless of who the person is. And oftentimes I think that we can, um, depending on the situation or, or whatever is happening, we are not showing grace with our mouths. Um, we will be very quick to cut people down very sharply. Um, and that's even so with our kids. Um, I know that there's moments where I will go off on my kid, depending on what they did, meaning like, you know, I might yell. Um, I did that not too long ago and I texted Pastor E and Christina. I was like, just so that you know, I got very angry and I yelled and I do plan to apologize, which I, which I did. Um, if you don't apologize to your children, I would just say be open to that because they are technically our brothers and sisters in Christ as well. Yeah. And so the way that we deliver things from our mouth that affects them, yeah. um, and it's not being a soft parent or anything like that, it's just that we should be, our speech should be seasoned with grace. Yeah. Um, and they deserve that as well. So not only our spouse, our children, those that we are around, um, there's just, if you're, if you're thinking about this scripture, there actually should be dialogue and language that we just shouldn't participate in yeah. depending on what's being said um and and how you react all of that stuff matters um because you are the salt of the earth so there should be a difference in the way that your life looks versus those that are around you that was that was god's intent so um the other part here um that i have that was very interesting to me if you look at mark um it's the same scripture but mark adds something different to it so mark 9 and 50 um it's talking about um we are to have peace and live in harmony and what it says here salt is good and is useful but if salt has lost its saltiness which again purpose how will you make it salty and then it says have salt within yourselves continually and be at peace with one another. Um, if you look at the previous verses, it talks about um, causing others to lose faith and how it's better to have something like horrific happen to you versus to cause to, versus causing someone to lose their faith. So like it talks like it's better for you to get one eye plucked out versus causing someone to lose faith or it's better for, you know, it's all these things. It's a very drastic um, comparison there because I think the point was you don't want to be the cause for your brother to stumble or you don't want to be the cause for it. The first verse talks about these little children, right, to stumble or to lose their faith in that. So um, your being salty um, it, it's, it's kind of a big deal when you're, when you think about it and how you're supposed to show up and how you're supposed to, to act, how you're supposed to represent yourself, especially in different types of situations, how you react to them. Um, if you're not showcasing the love of Christ, then you don't know who you're affecting while doing that. So like, I remember when I, um, it's always been very interesting to me that when I'll, used to go to the office. We don't do that no more, men that, you know, the pandemic and things happen. Everybody, for the most part, that had like an office position works from home. But when I was in the office, um, just out of the gate, there would be like conversations and somebody, we always would say drop the F-bomb, but y'all know what the F-bomb means, right? Somebody would drop the F-bomb and then another person would be like, don't cuss in front of Zoli. And I've never said, don't cuss in front of me. They would just be like, don't cuss in front of Zoli. And I'm like, 
I don't care if you cuss or not. I mean, I don't, they don't do nothing to me, whatever. But they started that without me like saying anything. Um, and I know that like I've had other friends that would have those certain situations where they're around somebody and somebody would automatically pick up and be like, don't do this in front of that person or whatever. But then when they find out that you actually are a Christian and, and you are saved or whatever, it goes like a whole nother level up, right? Like, don't drink in front of her. Don't do all this stuff in front of her. And I'm like, y'all tripping. But I think that that's just a good example of like having the saltiness where preaching the gospel and not having to use the words, right? It's about how you're showing up yeah. really does matter. Now, the other thing here, the very end, which I thought was very interesting, it talks about be at peace with one another. So you ever notice like how there are certain people, and I'm talking about Christians, I'm not talking about unbelievers actually, that like to call strife, like always stirring something up. And if they're not verbalizing it, they're doing it on Facebook. Like it's like, tick, 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 tick. like I'm gonna get them today, right? And it's not even changing anything after you didn't um, gave your fingers a workout. So um, having peace with one another is very much important so you, you know, and it says, it talks about in the Bible, if you have an alt against your brother or your sister or whatever, you need to make men's with that, come to peace with that. Um, so that's what we should be striving for. So in those moments where there is that, um, there's challenge or conflict or whatever that looks like, seek for peace. And I know that's hard. That's not an easy thing to do sometimes because you might actually be right. Yeah. You may not even be wrong. But if you need to have peace, then you need to make peace. So um, where the next one that I'm going to move to from an outline perspective um, would be preservation. So preserving salt not only adds flavor, um, but you can use it to preserve things. So when I looked up um, what exactly it, does that mean to preserve? Um, it's to slow the growth of bad things down in simple terms. So when I read that, I was like, huh, that's very interesting to slow the growth of bad things down or to eliminate them altogether, bacteria really, right? Um, and as salt, we have the ability to um, pretty much eliminate sin's power that we see that's destroying others. And so when I think about when he chose to use the word salt that we are salt and it didn't say we are going to be salt or whatever it already says we are salt so once you're in you know when the children of god you're salt like so this is you have that power um that the word preservation came up and so i think that it's very and i might be stretching it a little bit but just kind of stick with me a little bit um, if, if the job to preserve is to slow down bad things or to slow the growth down of bad things, it made me start to think about why does the world look the way that it does? Yeah. Yeah. So if we're the salt of the earth, then it sounds like somebody's not doing their job, yeah. right? Because the way things are moving and not to say like it's already been written right like you read up through revelation you know that things are coming but at the same time at the rate that they're coming i think that we've had the opportunity to slow some things down so it makes you it made me think about man i think we get so focused on us and like the things that we need to do that we completely lose sight of why we're here yeah. you know um there's nothing wrong i mean like yeah you're here and and there's things that god is going to ask you to do but the ultimate thing that he wants is for everyone to be saved ultimately he wants all of his children to be with him so for me me, not talking about anybody else, but for me, I had to question the things that I do, the motives that I do, the things that I say, how I show up, is that being a true representation of God? And is it drawing someone closer to Christ or is it pushing them away? And that includes my children and my husband too. As y'all can tell, that's where I need to grow. Um, but that it does. The way that I handle situations with my kids 
can either push them away from Christ or bring him towards it, towards him. Um, the way that I react to them, uh, whatever that is, I am supposed to be showing the love of Christ. And so I am a true representation. I have to be a true representation of that. Even when there's things that, you know, we know that they shouldn't be doing or whatever it is, the way that I react to that matters and it matters for you too. So, um, I th again, I think that from a, a, a salt perspective, a lot of times we're very much concerned about us. And then once we get saved, we're good. We're going to heaven and we're not thinking about the people that are around us. Right. So um, I always think about this. Um, if y'all seen the movies Troll, the very first one in the very beginning, and I always I always think about it. But in the very beginning, the father troll, he's um, like they get in some danger or something. They were trying to, um, I think they were trying to rescue some fellow trolls or something like that. And they go to this castle or something. It's been some years ago since I watched it. And they're trying to get these trolls. Anyway, the father troll, he's there or whatever. And he's like, they're in danger. And one troll is left behind or whatever. whatever and the little father troll is like, no troll left behind. And he goes back and he gets them. It's kind of like the 99 and the one thing. Like you don't want anybody left behind, right? And so the way that we show our saltiness, especially when it's people that we know and God's given us those opportunities, how dare we turn away from that? Like we have to be open to share the gospel. We have to be open to living our lives so that even if you know, you're not verbally talking about the gospel, what your representation, your billboard, your reputation or whatever words you wanna use, that is always pointing back to Christ. So that's, that's our purpose. Um, so the next thing to look at is contaminated salt. Um, so when salt is contaminated, it's no longer good for you. Um, it's poisonous and it can also happen with other minerals Contamination can happen with other minerals causing a weakness in flavor or unpleasant taste. Um, oftentimes we aren't focused on what can be weakening, weakening our saltiness. So that can mean like the company that you're keeping, the things that you're watching, the things that you listen to. There are things that can cause your saltiness to be weakened. Um, and not as potent as it should be. So we have to be mindful of things that are around us, what we entertain. Um, oftentimes we will make exceptions because we wanna be part of culture. Um, and if we know that there are things that um, we shouldn't lend an amen to, then that's okay, don't. Or a yes to, I shouldn't say an amen. A yes to, then don't. Um, we are meant to be different. And sometimes that means you have to, y'all hear me talk about it all the time. Sometimes you have to be that one that is doing something completely different than the whole millions. Yeah. And that's okay, because if that's what God said for you to do, then that's what you should be doing, regardless of what it looks like. Um, sometimes, and I had wrote here, you know, wanted to be so part of the culture and its ways of doing things, we lose our saltiness in the process. Um, it's hard to be about our father's business when we continue to make exceptions. Like uh, oftentimes, you know, people will like to only follow and obey parts of the scripture that benefit them in that certain season or whatever. And it's like you forget about the other parts of the scripture. Like you have to take all of it. <laughs> you can't just take some of it that's going to make it convenient for you. And that's not what what Christ is after. Um Contaminated salt is used as you, if you read in the scripture, that it can pour out on walkways, roads to prep for ice and fertilizing fields. So it's kind of like not useful anymore, basically. Um, so again, things in our life can contaminate us so that we use, um, so that we lose our saltiness. Simply put, um, we just need to make sure that we are doing things God's way. So I told y'all this is going to be quick. Um, so what can we do about that as far as losing our saltiness or not, you know, yeah, losing it, I guess it would be the best thing to say. Um, obedience is 
one way of keeping it. Um, so doing what God says do when he says to do it. Yeah. Um, and I know that that's um, not easy sometimes because it can be inconvenient. Um, sometimes it can pull you outside of your comfort zone. Um, it's like, God, I really don't want to do that. Sometimes you can talk yourself out of it and, you know, you're doubting so much. So you're just like, I don't think that was God's voice. I think that might have been the devil, even though it aligns with the scripture. But you're just you use that 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 phrase so that you can get out of whatever it is. But obedience. Um, the second thing is stand for God and his values. So, um, again, when you're thinking about looking at up towards the scripture, the Beatitudes, and he's talking about blessed is the person that does this and blessed are those that whatever, that kind of thing. He's laying out like just his values and things that he's expecting of us. Um, having a Mary posture, Mary as in Mary in the Bible, um, the Mary that sat at Jesus' feet, because I know there's a couple of them, that was the sister of Martha. Um, and that's probably because we just talked about it this past Thursday. But Mary was always found at the feet of Jesus, just wanting to know what he had to say and, and wanting to do what he wanted to do. And that's the posture that we have to take on. It's just, you know, spending that time with God, connecting with him, building that relationship. It's very much important. That's where you get your instruction from. That's where you get your direction from. So if people are like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Da, 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 da. Well, if you haven't spent time with God, then there's one thing that you can work on. Spend time with him. He'll tell you what to do. He may not show you everything. He may show you a little bit, but it's better for you to get that little bit than for you to act on your own accord. Yeah. Okay. So that's all I got, folks. That's the end of it. I mean, I mean, he can say no more than that. So <laughs> bottom line is, you know, don't lose your saltiness. And the way that you show up matters. Um, there's somebody else that's depending on you for that. We are to make a difference in the world. We are not to, to allow contamination to, to enter in and it, it can be done. So let's, let's be world changers and all of that. So we're gonna pray and, um, and then we'll go from there, okay? So, Lord, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. Um, God, I pray that it was productive. Um, I pray that it is something that we can easily take away from and apply immediately. Um, God, I just thank you for the people that are here. Um, and Lord, I just ask that you continue to do great things with us. Allow us to be the ones that um, will, will stand up and say, I, I am the salt. I am slowing things down. I am doing my part with those that are around me. Um, allow us, God, to be world changers. Um, it can start right in our homes. So allow us to, to, to do that right now within our homes, the, our closest circle. Um, allow us to, to be that change that people need to see. God, I pray that in those opportunities, when you give, us to, uh, give those to us, help us to have confidence um, and be brave and step out regardless of the outcome. We know that we planted the seed that needed to be planted or we watered the seed that someone else planted. Whatever that is, allow us to step out and do what you have called us to do. Overall, God, just continue to help us to have an obedient heart. God, allow us to do the things that you have said for us to do. Let us be willing to do that and not fight you on it. Um, Lord, we just thank you for this time and we thank you for your presence. In Jesus' name, amen.